How's it going Guardians? Shifty here and today I'm back with another solo Grandmaster run of the Devil's Lair. In this one I'm going to be running a Hunter and I'm going to be using the newly buffed Arbalist. Also for those of you who enjoy it I will be including live commentary to give you some tips along the way as well as explain my strategy. Now before I get into my loadout for this one, if you end up enjoying the video, make sure to hit that like button. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe as well. Alright, so on my Hunter, I decided to run Top Tree Night Stalker and I paired that with Orpheus Rig. Moving on to my weapons. As I already mentioned in my kinetic slot, I'm using Arbalist. This is an amazing weapon for barrier champions. It just got buffed with intrinsic anti-barrier rounds. So now, you can use it on barrier champions any season regardless of what mods are available. In addition to that, it currently takes advantage of particle deconstruction. Then it also has disruption break, so anytime you break a shield with this weapon, it increases kinetic damage to that target for a short time. This does work against barrier champions and it stacks with particle deconstruction. And lastly, if you have the catalyst, that gives it Genesis. What Genesis does is makes it so when you break an enemy shield, it reloads your magazine. Then in my energy slot, I have the Wolf Tone Draw, Arc Bow with Shoot to Loot and Dragonfly. And finally, in my heavy slot, I have Threaded Needle with Vorpal Weapon and Rapid Hit. And lastly, for my armor mods, I'll just quickly show you each piece of armor. And if you need to see anything in more detail, just pause the video. And that is all I have for my loadout here. There will be timestamps if you want to skip to a particular part of the strike, otherwise let's jump right into it. Alright, so if you checked out my Warlock run, you already know I'm going to be skipping pretty much all the enemies at the beginning here, including the Overload Champion. If you're worried about it, you will still get a Platinum Completion even if you skip this Overload. I'm just going to run right past it like that. It's pretty easy to do with Invisibility. Now even though I have a different subclass and a different loadout, this first Barrier Champion can still be extremely deadly, so you have to be careful with it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to go invisible. Get it to barrier. This will reload my magazine. And the barrier champion is down. Now I have to be careful for any additional adds still in the area. Including thrall. Acolytes. Grab that ammo quick. I'm going to go ahead and take this Vandal out and then worry about the Overlord Champion that's right here, in which I stunned with my Dragonfly Explosion. I'm going to get two Arbalist shots off before I swap back to my bow to prevent healing. And I'm going to go ahead and finish it off with my bow here. So we do have a Wizard. As you may have already noticed, I do not have any sort of solar damage for the wizard shields. So I'm going to be using Arbalist to break the wizard shields. You're going to get a thrall spawn when you push far enough up on these stairs. And that was a close call. Maybe if I was able to hit my bow shots, that would have went a little bit better. So we're going to have a barrier champion up here. 
There's going to be some acolytes, but I'm going to leave the acolytes. I just want to try to go for the barrier. Should be able to get an angle here. That'll reload my magazine. And I was able to take it out. So here we're going to have a bunch of enemies spawn in the middle. Break this wizard shield. And that worked out pretty well. Probably don't have long enough invisibility for this, but I'm going to try anyway. Now I want to go for the snipers in the back. One sniper down. Have that captain bothering me. There were going to be some dregs in the middle there. Figured I could get a grenade on them. Overload captain. I know there's one sniper left up top. I might actually go for this arc shielded captain to my right. The grenade spam is real. was a sniper left up there. It was just hiding from me. Now I can go for the overload. Alright, I'm already maxed on heavy ammo. I just got some special ammo from picking it up with my dragonfly explosion on my shoot to loot bow. So I'm ready to start the hack. Then I kind of immediately head over to the left here. An overload champion is going to head on over here. I'm going to deal with it like I've dealt with the other overload champions so far. As long as I don't get harassed by the other enemies around here. We're of course going to have some sniping vandals up to the left. almost forgot there's some dregs off to the right there. See if my grenade does anything to them. And I was looking for these guys just a moment ago. Shouldn't be too much longer before we get a shank spawn as well. There it is. I'm going to go invisible and kind of backtrack here. Might be a couple stragglers left around here. In fact, I hear an exploder. An 
and all I should have left is this art captain. And the first security measure has been deactivated. Gonna go ahead and try to get this wizard right away. There's gonna be another wizard in just a moment. Right there. That went way further than I wanted it to. But at least I still got a few enemies with it. We're gonna have a barrier champion here. Again, Arbalist makes pretty quick work of those. I'm going to go ahead and use my heavy. Got some ammo pickups from the Dragonfly Explosion again. It's always nice. There it is again. Gonna want to be careful for other enemy spawns like that. So the captains both decided they're going to go ahead and hide. I don't want to get too risky here. Is a shank spawn going to be coming? There it is. And we're going to be on to our third phase of security measures. I'm going to kind of dodge all that stuff to grab some orbs of light. Toss a grenade there to see if I can take out at least one vandal. But I have one overload champion in a pretty decent position. I'm not switching to my Arbalist because I don't really have the time to stick out for that. I kind of want to get this overload down. The reason I'm doing this now is because it's kind of stuck in that doorway there so I couldn't get an angle like I wanted to on it. Oddly enough, that worked out pretty well. Alright, this vandal needs to go.
two shots of Arbalest since I took some time switching to it. That way I can prevent healing again with my bow. And as you can see, there's a ton of Marauders here. I'm going to go ahead and super those. As you can see, there was a ton of ammo out here, which is why I'm just kind of using my ammo as I please. While I don't have to take this Vandal out, I just, I don't really want to risk it. And I'm going to be max ammo heading into the next area. Start things off over here. I'm going to toss a grenade up there. You know what, I'm going to quickly run back and max out my ammo since I have so much lying back here. Might as well max it out again. So first thing I want to do here is take out the two sniping vandals that spawn up here. There's one down and there's two down. Then I want to go ahead and, well, since these aren't being shielded by the servitor, I'm going to go ahead and take those out as well. And that barrier servitor was quite easy with Arbalist. That's why I think Arbalist is going to be one of the kings of anti-barrier weapons for the foreseeable future. Even without particle deconstruction, I feel like it's still going to be a pretty solid option. So as you can see, there's some vandals off to the right here. They're sniper vandals. There's about four of them, so you want to be careful for that. Looks like I still have a drag hanging out to my left. Now they're going to end up hiding, aren't they?
Anyway, while that's hiding, I'm going to go ahead and take care of the sniping vandal to my left. Like I mentioned in my Warlock video, if you don't want to spawn the Briggs, you don't want to push too far forward here. And I'd like to take some other enemies out before I spawn the Briggs. You can see there's an overload champion kind of right there as well. Now I've gained the attention of a drag. And there is a barrier servitor there, but I'm not really going to worry too much about that right now. There's still a sniping vandal down to the right there, but it refuses to come out. I'm just going to head off to the left here. And those enemies don't want to come out of there. There are some sniper vandals off to the left in the distance here as well that you have to be aware of. So I decided to come back over here to the right and see if the Vandals popped out. And I missed two bow shots only for the Vandal to head back to where it was. There is a barrier champion like I mentioned, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to head off to the left. Head on through this building. I'm going to prepare to fight an overload champion and some other enemies that are down here to the right. There's one of the vandals. Here comes the overload. I'm going to get two arbalist shots off this time since I threw a grenade. I feel like there's a few more enemies hiding down there. And my bow shot is something else right now. Alright, well I'm going to go ahead and push forward and spawn the Briggs.
I'm going to focus on this leftmost brig first. And since linear fusion rifles don't do a ton of damage to brigs, I'm just going to go ahead and use my bow until I break the faceplate off. The linear fusions don't do incredible damage to the body. So it's not really worth the ammo. This process is a little bit tedious, but we should be able to get the job done, no problem. I missed that grenade, and it wasn't even worth the risk. I'm almost dying. I'm actually going to see what my threaded needle does here. It's not bad. It does a little bit more damage, but not much. Yeah, it's definitely not worth the ammo, I don't think. You do have to be careful for the void attack. As you saw earlier when I threw that grenade, it does a significant amount of damage. Base plate should be coming off. And I'm going to go ahead and arbalist it. And it's dead before it could even get off one of the heavy attacks. So there is going to be a brig off to the right as well. So we're going to head over there and take care of that one. I first want to lure it kind of to my location. I'm going to do that by jumping and shooting near it. I think I've gained its attention and it should kind of strafe to the right here. Which is what I want. You don't want to shoot it, otherwise it's going to force it to kind of boost to the left. Now it should boost to the right. Like that. And now it should boost left and right from that location. And we just have to peek out from cover. Try not to get decimated by that void attack. So this is tedious, but it is a little bit safer as well because the overload rounds from the bow will reduce the damage that the brig does to you as well. And unfortunately, it's kind of moved off to the left there. We're going to see if we can lure it back to the right. Faceplate is broke off. I was not sure how I wasn't hitting it initially there. Either way, we were able to take care of it.
And now I'm going to head off to the left here to deal with the fallen walker. So from on top of this building, if you head right back here, you can generally shoot at one of the legs and just keep spamming your shots and you shouldn't be bothered at all by the fallen walker. You could use your bow for this entire process. However, if you want to speed it up and you are sure you're going to have enough ammo, you can go ahead and use your linear fusion rifle as well. And then it's a little finicky, but you can actually hit it right there in the crit spot. And you're going to want to be careful anytime ships come in. That one shouldn't bother you too much in this location. But now we can go ahead and break a uh, second leg on the right, or you could swap to the left side if you wanted to. And just like that, the fallen walker tank is down. Now we're going to want to be careful for any invisible marauders and other enemies that may have spawned in the meantime. So I know there's definitely more than one marauder somewhere around here. It's making me a little nervous that I don't know where they're at. But I'm going to soup around to the right. See if I can find the Marauders. Well, there's one of them. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to try to super. Not sure why that Overload Captain is running away. I know there's a Marauder like right next to me and I knew that ship was there but I wanted to get an overload shot off on the captain. Alright the overload is down and we found the hiding invisible Marauder. I do want to be careful just in case there's another one hanging out somewhere. Alright. I think I'm going to go for this barrier champion next. So what I'm going to do, Arbalist at once. I'm going to wait until it's in sight line again. And then Arbalist again. And that champion is down. Easy enough. some point we should get another champion to spawn as well as an arch shielded captain I'm not sure why it's healing well it started to heal there push forward will another champion spawn there it is so I'm gonna back away and where is this arc shielded captain hiding now Ever since my Warlock run of this, I don't mess with those Arc Shielded Captains. They're my least favorite enemy in this entire strike. They're not so bad with Arbalist, but for my Warlock run, they were the worst enemy by far. And 
And we have a few regular ads left. I think that should do it, and we can head to the boss fight. Want to grab any ammo to max out if I can. And off we go. So if you're at all familiar with this boss fight, you know there's going to be two overload champions as well as several dregs before the boss fight even starts. And I'm going to head on over to the safe room here. I want to try to isolate a champion. I don't know how well that's going to work, especially given the circumstances. I'm going to risk it. Got one champion down, which is ideal. It's on the next one. I'm going to go ahead and try to take care of some of these dregs. And that was way too close for comfort. I'm going to wait to heal. I think I want to try to prioritize that grenade spamming dreg. Not sure where it went. So until it peeks out again, I'm going to go ahead and peek shoot this overload. And the boss fight should be starting. I'm going to go ahead and grab ammo quick. And I almost forgot about the Arc Shielded Captain that runs in this room. That could have been very bad. I thought there were going to be a few more enemies there than that. I'm going to have to try to grab some orbs of light here to get charged with light. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. There we go. I got two stacks. I think I can resume boss damage. There may be a drag off to my right yet. And we're going to have our first wave of servitors. I'm going to kind of wait for the ads to spawn that just spawned. There was a ship that dropped them off.
Now we have a shank spawn. Finally that thing came out. This is not going very smoothly. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and try to take out one of these servitors quick. One more servitor. I wanted to make sure an exploding shank wasn't coming up on me. Alright. So we are going to have a wave of enemies. No sense in spending a ton of time on that wave of enemies. I am just getting absolutely annihilated in terms of damage on this one. Boss is right outside of my room here. We have invisible marauders now. I'm going to go invisible and kind of see what's going on over here. Yep, there's a bunch of marauders still. And I know there's heavy ammo on the outside there, so I'm going to wait for my invisibility next time. To go grab that. I'm going to go invisible, like I mentioned, and grab all of that.
You know what? These enemies are kind of annoying today. There we go. I feel like there's still an invisible marauder somewhere over here. Maybe not. running away because there's going to be a shank spawn as well as champions to alleviate my situation a little bit I'm going to go ahead and take out two of these servitors right away I figured there's going to be some enemies down here When you come down here you do want to be careful because sometimes invisible marauders will come in this room. I might have this champion in a good position. If I was reloaded, that would have been better. I'm going to go ahead and take out this servitor as well. I have to be very careful. This one could shred me pretty easily. No, you're going away. Same. All right. I do want to check down low again. Of course, we have another wave of shank spawn. Just double checking for any invisible marauders or anything like that. And boss shield is down. However, we do have some more enemies spawning.
And that was a terrible super. You know what? I'm not even going to bother with a lot, a lot of these enemies. I'm going to just head down here. And hopefully not get run up by a marauder. Never mind. I should probably clear out some enemies first. I knew there was going to be invisible marauders again. Can't really fight the invisible marauders when the Sepix is out. Well, I'm going to head down here and see what happens. See if I can find the boss. It's almost down. And there we go. That's Sepix Prime down. And as you can see, we still got a platinum rating, even though we skipped that overload at the beginning. Now that's how I go about soloing the Grandmaster Devil's Lair on a Hunter. If you checked out the full run, you know Arbalist is a monster against barrier champions. Part of that is due to particle deconstruction, however this weapon is going to be great even after that mod goes away. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed the video, and if you did, remember to like and subscribe. I just want to thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.